On reflection, the construction of shadows using traditional drawing techniques is really, in the context of ubiquitous 3D modelling software, rather redundant. Having said this though, the exercise of constructing shadows does help consolidate the principles of orthographic drawing and their interconnectedness. Jumping forward to paraline projections, constructing shadows will provide additional mental exercise to extend your understanding of how paraline drawings are constructed. In this exercise, we will combine all three cubes into the one tower. When combining our separate plan oblique drawings, we will need to further edit the hidden line work and then redraw the stacked composition into the one final form. From this singular form, we will construct our shadow. For this instructional, I will be using a vertical shadow angle of 30 degrees and a horizontal shadow angle of 40 degrees. For your own shadow constructions, you can choose your own values, but the shadow must fall from the left to the right of the page. When choosing the horizontal and vertical shadow lines, check first to make sure that the angles you choose will generate a shadow that will fit onto your page. Starting with the simple cube, you can see the principle is simply constructing the shadow by intersecting the horizontal and vertical shadow angles. The vertical angle springs from the top of the cube and the horizontal shadow angle from the corresponding location on the ground plane. By working around the edges of the cube in this manner, we can construct our first shadow of the simple cube. Now let's jump forward to see how would we construct the shadow of an object that is sitting above the ground. In this instance, I will concentrate on drawing the shadow of the upper solid cube only, assuming at this time the two cubes supporting it are invisible. I will also simplify the geometry of the cube to eliminate the side cuts. I will use the same vertical shadow angle and horizontal shadow angle as per the slide before. I will use the same vertical shadow angle from the top of the cube and project the horizontal shadow angle from the corresponding location on the ground. The intersection of the vertical and horizontal shadow angles will give me the geometry of my first edge of the shadow. Note that I can also use the principles of paraline projection to construct the second edge of the shadow shown in blue given that it will be parallel to the corresponding edge of the cube also shown in blue. Through a combination of construction and paraline projection, we can construct the shadow of the simple cube in the air. It will be useful to try and number the edges of the cube and then the corresponding edges of the shadow to get a sense of the respective orientations of the geometry. Having stretched ourselves a bit with the floating cube, Let's focus on the easier lower portion of the tower stack. The construction of the shadow will be the same process as the simple cube on the first slide. Having completed the main shadow geometry, we need to edit the outline to make sure we capture some of the subtle detail. In this instance, we will try to capture the tapered slice from the upper cube. Using the vertical and horizontal shadow angles, we should be able to locate the two points in space and construct them on the shadow. I am using primarily the vertical shadow angle and intersecting the existing shadow geometry. The shadow projection of the undercut wedge of the solid cube can also be located again using the same principles of horizontal and vertical shadow angle projections. Finally, having done the hard work constructing the shadow geometry we can combine the shadow outlines and the cubes to create our final plan oblique view of our tower of cubes plus the shadow projection. Completing the rendering of the shadows is at your own discretion. Remember, whatever technique you use, you should be able to scan the drawing so that you get a clear and crisp final result. If in doubt, do a test render and scan it to check the results. A guaranteed way of getting a consistent tone that scans well is to use a hatch like what is shown on the left. A coloured or toned shadow is risky unless you do it carefully and test it.
beforehand.